Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our text for consideration today is from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 to 2, and also verse 11. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. He has made everything beautiful in its time. This is the text. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in his heart, in our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. To Alice, Samantha, Pam, Mike, Jeff, family and friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today doesn't seem beautiful. At first glance, there's nothing beautiful about today. It's a day of mourning and great personal loss. Weeping seems more appropriate than the appreciation of beauty. In no way do we discount the sorrow of the day, nor the tears that are shed. For the sense of loss you're experiencing is real. St. Paul instructs us, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Therefore, today we mingle our tears with yours, as we're privileged to share your burden and your sorrow. After all, the years of shared living are now abruptly ended. How sweetly and yet painful to remember the beginning of your time with John. How bittersweet the memories of having him in your life, and especially with the birth of his daughter, Samantha. How lovingly you all embraced John through challenges that he faced through his years. And yes, the time near the end when disease forced a final sharing of life's experience together. Death never seemed appropriate at all, let alone beautiful. Rather, when we see death or experience it at close hand, we associate it with something bad, ugly, and morbid. And in many ways... That's precisely what death is like. And now in addition to the sense of loss, there's also the uncertainty of a future, which lies ahead. Yes, weeping is certainly an appropriate response in the face of grief. Jesus, too, wept at the funeral of a dear friend, Lazarus. Our Lord knows precisely the sorrow that you feel this day, and he shares it with you. But our mourning today isn't the end of it all. Our text says plainly that there's more to life and death than futility, pain, and suffering. If we're to be ready to meet either life or death, we must see the beauty of God's Son, Jesus Christ, for only in Him can we find the true meaning and comfort we seek on this day of sadness. For in Christ, even a day like this becomes a thing of beauty. Today we see the beautiful fulfillment of your loved one's Christian faith. God's promise of eternal life through Christ has been fulfilled for John. The note that he shared with you, that you shared with me at the funeral home, speaks of a new reality. John had written, radio up, windows down, 18 wheels going round and round, coffee cup full, sun in my face. This old trucker's in one happy place. 
And just think of the happy place that John is in now. While we yet struggle with the pain of the moment, for John, God's promise of all things working together for good is now reality. Like the rest of us, John would be quick to sing the praises of God who took a sinful man who was a sinner and transformed him into a child of the living God. Like all of us, John had been estranged from God, divorced from our Creator, because that's the way that we're conceived and are born. With John, we all must confess with David. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time of my mother's that my mother conceived me. But God wouldn't let us perish. Consider the beauty of what the Father accomplished through His Son. Through Christ's atoning sacrifice, the stain of our sin, which disqualified us from life with God, was removed. As St. Paul puts it, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. The cross on which our Lord gave his life for us wasn't at first glance a thing of beauty, but it is to us now. This ugly instrument of Roman execution has become the very symbol of the Christian faith. Now it's prominently seen on Christian churches throughout the world. It's the sign of our hope, our life, and the beauty of our salvation. Also, a hole in the ground is rarely considered a thing of beauty, much less a rock-hewn tomb. But on this day of mourning, let us remember the resplendent beauty of an empty tomb. Its occupant couldn't be held by the constraints of death. On this day of all days, let us remember the beauty of the empty tomb and know that we haven't seen the end of John. For as Christ has been risen from the dead. So too will all who have been buried with Christ in baptism be raised to life in Christ's resurrection. Yes, today, with our tears, we can see the beauty of the grave in knowing that the day will come when the grave will be as empty as was Christ. Through the beauty of Christ's empty grave, we know that death cannot, it will not, and it shall not have the last word today or any other day. And what of your future and the days and weeks and years ahead that you thought you would experience with John? What will they be like? This much is certain. You're not going into the future alone. God will walk with you and bear you up when your sorrow revisits you in the days ahead. The great Christian apologist C.S. Lewis once said, God whispers to us in our pleasure, but he shouts to us in our pain. God doesn't promise that the days ahead will be easy, but he does promise to give us the strength we'll need to face each new day. With St. Paul, we hear Christ's voice saying, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Cling to the precious means of grace, God's word and sacraments, for they alone can strengthen and bring joy, even in the face of death and the hardships of life. Lean on the community of Christ, God's people, who will comfort you and share your burdens, as well as your joys. Most importantly, cling to Jesus Christ, under the shadow of whose cross both life and death have become instruments of His grace. God is at work in the days at hand and in those that lie ahead to create the beauty of His craftsmanship for your life as well. For you, as well as for John, these words are true. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. He has made everything beautiful in its time. To John's family and friends, we entrust you into Christ's care. May God give you the comfort and peace of the resurrection these upcoming days. And may your faith be strong in Christ to life everlasting. Amen.
We continue with the right of committal as printed on our worship insert. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. For none of us lives to himself alone and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of life, with whom live the spirits of those who depart in the faith, we thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you grant to this departed brother, whose earthly remains we lay to rest. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit Jonathan's body to its resting place, Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, Keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. And by his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his glorious resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death in the grave, which he won for us. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with all that wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him, who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord.